championship tradition continues. Georgia Southern football with Mike Seawalk. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Hospital, compassionate care without compromise, Coca-Cola, always Coke, and by Huddle House Restaurants, any meal, any time, 24 hours a day. Now, here's your host. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2002. I'm Brady Posk alongside Eagles head coach Mike Seawalk. Coach, uh, we return here to Finley Stadium in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, a place that's uh, been, been rather uh, friendly to the Eagles in the past few years. We sure have played some good games up here, both against Chattanooga and, of course, all the national championships games they've had here in the past. But it's a nice day for it. It was the first time I think we've played in Sun since uh, 1998. Uh, How did the team practice after uh, last week's loss? This well, week? I think everybody was thoroughly uh, disappointed and frustrated with this, the situation that occurred last Saturday night. I know uh, we looked at everything and analyzed it, so the kids, and we came back out and uh, probably had our best football practice on Tuesday. Uh, a lot of people getting after it and getting focused. And then uh, Thursday again, I kind of called them all up there just before coming out here to go ahead and sharpen things up. And they, uh, again, turned it up a notch. And uh, I feel like we got ourselves in a good situation. And, I said, you know, this is going to be a team known as fighters. I mean, this is going to be a situation that, uh, you know, if we can win out in the Southern Conference and uh, Wofford wins out, they win. If they don't win out, then Georgia Southern still has a chance to go ahead and take care of business. Take it on a, a Tennessee Chattanooga team today. Hasn't seen a win yet this year. Uh, what do you expect to see from them today? Well, except for a couple of plays, they could be two and two right now. There's a couple of situations that haven't occurred out there. Uh, I'm sure that Coach Kilpatrick and his staff is putting some things together. I mean, they talk about which quarterback's going to play, and we'll be surprised if we don't see Ryan, but uh, they'll probably end up playing with Barnes, the kid they've played with for the last two games, and he's done a good job for him, gave him a chance to win both games, so uh, we look for seeing that, and then they talk about their running game, trying to continue to go on that. And uh, I think the offense line on Chattanooga, I mean, I read up here where they're talking about Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. I think the Georgia Southern defense has gained a lot of respect over the last couple of years, and we got to go ahead and show our people why we play our defense. All right, Coach, good luck today in the Southern Conference. Uh, hopefully first win of the season in the Southern Conference. When we come back, first half highlights, but first it's the Coca-Cola play of the day. Georgia Southern football 2002 time now for the first half highlights coach a, a nice crowd here for uh, Georgia Southern at uh, Finley Stadium like we usually have here exactly ready it was great to hear them out there they were vocal again and uh, we have uh, we got a lot of fans from North Georgia and Atlanta they get an opportunity to come and see us up here and it's an easy shot for them and they they let us know that they were out there today and they uh, supported our kids rather well coach we'll start off the highlights on our first possession uh, Chad's taken off on an 11 yard run for a first down then at the 45 we get called for one of those chop blocks and uh, that, that, that took us back a little bit, but kept the drive alive with uh, Zream on the pitch for 12 yards and uh, third and nine. Chaz with big busted play it looked like he was going to pass, but he took off for a 15-yard run. And that's what we that's what we usually look for right now. We try to get back here. Uh, it was great to have a first and 25 and make a first down on that drive, and that kept the drive going and of course gave us the opportunity to score the touchdown. And then Chaz. Uh, we've looked for that in our offense before. Our quarterback goes back there and he's trying to look to throw the football. And this, and this uh, defense that we got right now with the five DBs back there, sometimes there's not a big pocket back there. And he was trying to find it, couldn't see it. And then uh, with their three man rush, and uh, he had an opportunity to get back there again. He had three men and then three men underneath and five deep. When he turned that corner, and I was just wanted to see him get the first. And I found out he did. I was happy. I was pleased. That's what our Georgia Southern football, that's what our quarterback does, brings to us. He, he makes the passing game uh, both throwing the football, but also makes you be honest that if you're going to go ahead and drop all those guys, and when he breaks contain, then you ought to pay for it. And then on first and goal from the four, Chaz takes off for a four-year touchdown run, puts us up 7-0 with a 7-0-1 left in the first quarter. A nice 14-play drive there. 14 plays again. That's a very <laughs> consistent. That seems to be the number we need to get to. Uh, however, we're going to get to this 13-play drive, so we're getting a little bit better. And, uh, on the next possession, we pitch it out to uh, Jermaine Austin. Nice 11-yard run. Able to pitch it to the fullback nicely today. Then a big play on fourth and one from our own 45. He decided to go for it, and Hakeem picks it up. Hakeem did. He, put, he loaded his pads down. He was a real warrior in that situation. He, he got his pad level down underneath, and it was uh, he ran with confidence. He went straight up the field. He kept his feet driving. He got the first down, and uh, wasn't going to be denied, and neither were we. First down later in the drive, and then Chaz takes off for 16 on second down. 
Then a nice pitch down to TJ inside the five yard line gets us down to the goal line. That sets up the, uh, the touchdown to Chaz Williams for the keeper and that makes it 14 to nothing. Uh, four seconds into the fourth quarter, and as you said, a, a nice second thirteen quarter, yeah. play second quarter in a nice thirteen play drive there. It was a, it was a, that was typical Georgia Southern football right there, running the option down the football field, getting everybody getting everybody getting a touch, uh, the fullback getting the ball pitched, and then having the quarterback run the ball. Uh, TJ's uh, score. I thought TJ was going to score. Uh, he took it north and south, and that's kind of what we expect from our A backs. It was great to have TJ Anderson playing in the game like that, and and Mark Myers and Z Walden. I mean, all all, the, all three of those guys, and of course Kevin Davis also later in the game. To have those four guys go in and, and uh, rotate and give us a fresh look each time, I think that's important. And the defense continues to play well this year. Uh, Chattanooga's first play after uh, the touchdown, Joe Scott and Freddie there for the uh, for the stop in a one-yard gain. And then Joe Scott just annihilated the quarterback for a seven-yard loss on the sack there. It was great to see those guys flying around and having fun again. That's the most important thing. I think if you're having fun playing defense like that, you gain a lot of confidence. And I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of happy defenders out there. And then our next possession, uh, we'll pick it up on fourth and one. And this is where uh, Hakeem got into a little trouble, fumbled. Uh, UTC would take over on the 42, but uh, Hakeem injured on that play, and he might be out for a while. He could be very, could be out for a while. Uh, he um, got the first down. After he got the first down, the defender put a good helmet on the football, and unfortunately, it was the, the, that helmet also took his, hit his elbow. And uh, you know, right now we're, we're looking at a elbow. Uh, he might have broke his elbow, so we'll have to see how bad it really is. Later on. Uh, UTC on their drive on fourth and six from the 29, the incomplete pass on the overthrow, and we take over there on the 29. Our next possession uh, on third and nine, only a four-play drive here. Uh, Chaz passed to Jermaine Austin, and Jermaine really made something happen on that for a 69-yard touchdown, a great run after the catch. Absolutely. That, if you look at that on tape, you're going to see it right now. We show it to you. The, the fullback got out there in the screen, and they're dropping all those people deep, and then what we did is we, the wide receiver went down there and pushed, and got a good stock block, and then the Backside A back and the, and the backside and the trips A back got also got down there and at one time I believe he was being led by four wide receivers down there and then what happens is they get everybody dropping deep and all of a sudden you can sometimes you can throw that underneath stuff but uh, we were fortunate enough to get that off and then Jermaine made a great run. So Georgia Southern up 21 nothing with 3:09 left in the half and then we move along later in the second quarter uh, we get the ball and after another Jermaine run with a minute and 21 left in the half. Uh, Jermaine fumbles, unfortunately, on second and six, and uh, UTC recovers. Very disappointing. That's 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 exactly how we've lost in the past, and that, that could hurt you in the long run, and it will. Uh, there's something right there that you're going to try to close out a half. We need to close out a half. And then uh, on UTC's first play, Jonathan Wilkerson, the true freshman from Claxton, filling in for AK Keys, who was out there for a while, uh, picks off his first pass and returns it to the 46 and saves the day before the half. Absolutely, Brady. Got us off the snide on that. Our, our, we've been waiting for an interception, and uh, Lo and behold, a true freshman makes it, and uh, when he did it, he also made somebody miss. He runs very well with the football. I was hoping he'd go down that sideline. I know he did outrun me, but I'd try to keep up with him. Coach dominated the first half up 21 to nothing, and uh, when we come back, we'll have second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Tennessee Chattanooga. But first, it's the Ask Coach question. Back to Georgia Southern football 2002 time now for the Ask Coach question. And Coach, a, uh, Roy Johnson from Winston, Georgia asks, how often do you come up with new offensive schemes to keep the offense productive? Well, Roy, I'll tell you, we, uh, we still try to run the triple option, but we try to do it out of different formations and different motions. So we, we usually put something in a new wrinkle in each week, uh, something to give us a little bit of an advantage, either by numbers or by angles. And then also, when they start to make the adjustments to it, Roy, then we'll try to come with something out the back. And that's what happened here tonight. We tried to get the triple one way, and then they gave us a little dump passes to the backside. And we really had the pitch working tonight pretty well, too. That uh, We can make that happen, too, by inside releasing sometimes and getting an opportunity to get that ball in the perimeter. And if you'd like to ask Coach a question, just email us at abc22tv.com and get a chance to ask Coach a question and possibly win an autographed Georgia Southern football at the end of the season. When we come back, second half highlights of Tennessee Chattanooga and Georgia Southern. 
Ask the coach and win big. Send in a postcard or register online at abc22tv.com with a question about the Georgia Southern Eagles. Then watch Sunday at 1 with Brady Fossick and coach Mike Seawalk. If your question is selected, you'll win an autographed game training card and be in the running to win an autographed Georgia Southern game football. Register today. Then watch the action Sundays at 1 on Georgia Southern football with Coach Mike Seawalk on ABC 22. Try to make a statement. Last week, you know, we had a loss to Wofford, so we just wanted to come out today and try to move the ball down the field. We did good at that, rushing the ball, and defense did a good job of stopping them. And this right here was just a test, and we passed it. And next week is going to be another test, and we're going to um, do pretty good against them because there's no going back. I mean, defense is just we're, we're trying to gradually get better. Uh, you know, we know it's not going to happen all of a sudden. You know, it's, it's one of those things you got to work on week by week. But uh, no, I think we did a good job working on it again this week and. Now, sure enough, we went out there and uh, shut them down for a little while. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Time now for the second half highlights. Coach up 21 nothing at the half, and uh, you had them down the entire first half. Pretty much wanted to put them away in the, at the beginning of the third quarter. Absolutely, we wanted to come out and make a statement, go down there and get a touchdown, and uh, be strong, and, uh, and just let them know that. Uh, Georgia Southern came to play for all 60 minutes. And we'll pick it up on second one. Chaz Williams, the keeper, and a big run for him, 45 yards down to the 12-yard line. Well, when we came out in the halftime, we were going to throw the football to get ourselves to bring those corners a little bit into play because they're so back. And then uh, what else we did is we got a formation, and we did put a little a little uh, tweak in the offense and, and uh, allowed that quarterback to go ahead and read it. And then when he did read it right, we tried to release the tackle a little bit different. And you see Chaz getting outside here and just accelerating away. And then after Chaz will pick up a first down on third and two, second and goal from the one, and Chaz keeps it for the one-yard touchdown, and there we go, up 28 nothing, three minutes into the second half. I was pleased with that drive. I was pleased with Chaz and the way the offense operated right there, and we went, took it down the field again and made that statement. We put that, the touchdown in. I thought, that put the, I thought that would put the nail in the coffin right there, but uh, credit to UT Chattanooga. They, they're going to fight the whole time. Chattanooga comes out with a new quarterback, Ryan McCann, the transfer from UCLA, and he hits Jason Jones for a 25-yard pass, and then... Uh, the big one uh, was down to Greer for 12 yards, but we hold him to a field goal to make it 28 to three with 740 left in the third. Defense did, had a nice stand there. And I was surprised too when McCann came in how, how fluid he was. He went to play action pass, set his feet up and threw the football. And that was a little disappointing, but um, we got ourselves right. Chattanooga's next possession on a second and 10, Matt Rio, the uh, nice stop for, held him to a two yard game, but then on fourth and three, they go for it and uh, the incomplete pass and we take over to the 38. Again, a um, defense bowed up right there. They, were, they showed their true colors again, and that was, I was proud to see the defense do that blue and white thing. And that was uh, when we play like that, it's, it's a, to, for them to go in on fourth down. And we kind of felt like they'd throw it because they always had in the past. That's their MO on fourth down. But, uh, but we got the pressure, and then our guys got down in the secondary. And uh, David was involved in it, and everybody else kind of flew around. On our next possession on second and seven, Chaz. Uh to Mark Myers for a 41-yard gain down to the 18. And uh, right there, Chaz was 3 of 5 passing at 116 yards. That was a huge play, though. Well, that's, that's Georgia Southern offense right there. Keep running the option, 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 and he hit that option pass. And we tried to hit it twice early in the game and didn't get it, but I just wanted to come back to it one more time. I knew it was there. We'd worked on it for two weeks now, and I knew that it, that was going to be there eventually. And sure enough, Mark did it, made the catch, and then made a good run afterwards. Had him pulled on third and seven then to keep the drive alive. Uh, Chaz on the keeper up the middle for a nice nine-yard run there. Uh, the draw. We uh, got a good job. We got in there. The kids did a good job. And then Chaz went back there, and as everything unfolded, we were fortunate to get him up the field and get a first down. And then two plays later, Chaz, the pitch to Kevin Davis, finally getting healthy. 11-yard uh, touchdown right then. It's 35-3 to Georgia Southern with 14.03 left in the game. It was great to see Kevin go north and south with that pitch and get down in there. And it was also good to see our, our A back on that side do a great job blocking and pinning the corner inside. That was... Uh, Kind of like you like to see. Uh, Chattanooga takes over, and uh, James Perchett, Perchett had a nice big game yesterday uh, with the stop, and they would eventually punt the ball back to us. Uh, Trey Hunter and Brandon Andrews come in, little two-yard run there before that drive stalled. In the fourth, uh, Chattanooga finally gets their first touchdown of the game on first and 18. McCann, an 18-yard touchdown pass to uh, Jason Jones again. It's 35-10, to 10 and uh, but there's only 7.45 left in the game there. Yeah, and, and they hit the fade, and they did a good job. I mean, Aaron Whitaker was in position. He started to run with it, and then all of a sudden he took his eyes off the receiver, which is a, 
it was a critical error, and he uh, did. He didn't play through the hands of the of the receiver, and if he had played through the hands, I think Aaron Whitaker is a better football player than that particular play indicated. Chattanooga in a hole, so they try the uh, onside kick. We recover it at uh, Chattanooga's 45-yard line, set up some uh, some short field position there for ourselves, and Brandon Andrews from Swainsboro, a nice eight-yard run on first down right there. Absolutely. I think also there was a big play by Terrence McBride on that special teams to catch at the uh, that uh, onside kick, our guys were aware of it. They're all coming up on it, and uh, they were tight. We were tight, and our guys did a good job moving. And Terrence McBride's also on our hands team, so I didn't have any confidence. I didn't have any doubt that he'd take it. I just wanted to make sure that it, he didn't go ahead and uh, try to run because the ball hadn't gone 10 yards. On first and goal from the seven, we get called for another chop block, second one of the game. And uh, but Scott Shelton has solid day all day long. A 30-yard field goal to make it 38 to 10, Georgia Southern with 3:18 left in the game. That's the way Scott's been he, here lately. His kicking has been was uh, outstanding tonight, both punting and in the field goal. And I think his kickoffs did a great job too. He pinned, he's good hang time down inside the hashes, and that's what we wanted to see. And then to say, have him go up there and kick that field goal, uh, I'm awful proud. I've, I've worked with him before, but he's done a good job on himself, trying to get himself better and better. Defense def desperately wants to keep Chattanooga out of the end zone for their own pride. On first and 36, Jonathan Wilkerson makes a great play to break up McCann's pass, but he, he comes down a little awkward on his wrist there. He did. He kind of tweaked his elbow. Uh, uh, Jonathan's one of our faster football players, and when he plays the game, he does. The, he did a great job. And he left his feet, went up in the air, and uh, I don't know how many other people would chest Wilker Wilkerson after this. <laughs> On uh, first and 25, then McCann, a big, uh, big pass to Rankin, and but Ronnie Abrams saves the touchdown at the two-yard line, and uh, that was huge because after the false start, it's uh, it's our man Freddie Pescada picking off the pass, and he returns it all the way to the 24-yard line. Exactly. I, I was telling Freddie, and I told our defense in there too. It's a, it's a shame when the defensive line is tied with interceptions with the DBs. We got to get a linebacker to get one now. But uh, great play. What a great what a great defensive stand down here, and that's kind of what we've expected out of us in the past. Uh, those kids play with a lot of heart. Those guys go in there like that and uh, turn them back away. Uh, there's no doubt that Chattanooga also wanted to get that score. They were they were uh, solid in their effort down there and what happened they tried to run the ball and they couldn't get it over us coach 38 to 10 final a pretty dominating performance throughout and uh, got to be happy with the way the team rebounded from last week oh extremely happy I, I, we were frustrated and disappointed in last weekend and uh, to come up here and play in this stadium uh, it's always been good to us in the past uh, it was a typical score we had up here two years ago but it's one of the situations now some of our younger guys are starting to get the plays that they need to go ahead and make and they got to realize that they're the ones that got to make it there's no one else going to step between the white lines anymore it's up to them, and I was real proud to see both Chaz and, and um, Jermaine to get over 100 yards again. And if we're doing that, then uh, Georgia Southern football is on, uh, it's on the rise again. Coach, nice win today. First win of the conference. Uh, moved, improved to 1-1 one and one now and 2-2 two and two overall. When we come back, we'll talk about next week's game. We'll return to Georgia Southern football 2002. <laughs> Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Coach, we have a little while to uh, enjoy this week's win, a couple of days before we start getting ready for VMI, and it's a, a big week always because it's homecoming. Homecoming, when they get a lot, lot alumni back and, and family and friends back into Paulson, and also we got to go back to Paulson. Uh, I think we let a lot of people down last week, uh, most importantly ourselves as a football team, and so it'll be a, it'll be a great to go back there and make a statement. Uh, VMI is a well-coached football team. Cal McCombs has played the option for all his adult life, and his adult life's getting into, uh, up there. He's a, a senior citizen now, but uh, he's uh, VMI's done such a good job, and I think VMI also scares us because of the amount of points that they've put on the board here last week, and uh, even last weekend against Furman, scoring 21 points, uh, 21 points against William and Mary, 21 points. Uh, you know they do a good job, and that's they're sound, they're they're military, so they're going to be well disciplined and well structured. They'll give us all we can handle. And we know they're going to come in with their hair on fire because it's their last game against us in the Southern Conference. Absolutely. They'll be, they'll be focused and say, hey, we got an opportunity to get after Georgia Southern. Uh, I think that they'll come in here and, and uh, they got a great nose guard and, and Cluck. That guy's been a good, he's been a warrior for them and two good linebackers that we've seen in the past. And I think that Gibson is doing a good job for them throwing the football. So this will be a situation that will be tested rather well. All right, Coach. Good luck next week and congratulations tonight. 38 to 10 over Chattanooga on Georgia Southern's home away from home here at Finley Stadium. Georgia Southern proves now to 1-1 one one in the conference. Two and two on the season. Hope to see you next week at homecoming at Paulson Stadium. For Coach Seawalk, I'm Brady Fossick. We'll see you next time.
Georgia Southern football with Mike Seawalk. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Hospital, compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Huddle House Restaurants, any meal, any time, 24 hours a day.